Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a really good weekend. Hope everybody had a really great uh, trading session. Uh, what a day, right? What a day. We'll get to the action uh, in a second. If you are brand new uh, to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, come aboard. Come aboard on a daily broadcast. Uh, we do this uh, Monday through uh, Thursday and then once on the weekend to kind of give you uh, the day-to-day -day aspects of technical analysis and short-term sentiment. Again, not in the prediction business, not in the, this stock is going to be at this price at that time. Again, we're not trying to win, uh, you know, we're not trying to pick the closing prices. We're just trying to win our interval. We're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to get as much piece of the pie as we can uh, and not be greedy at the same time. Well, we'll get to that uh, in a second. So let's talk about from the macro point of view first, and then we'll continue the day. We'll get to the pivots uh, in a second, uh, as you guys, if you guys remember, uh, over the weekend we talked about the the Nasdaq, uh, Nasdaq and the SPX, but especially the QQQs are are building, a, you know, a nice little base here below the 20-day moving average and below uh, the 20-day. It's it's supply. Okay, we don't want the demand to turn into supply, and we want the other way around to be bullish, uh, and that's not the case. And despite today's rally, we had a really pretty good rally today. It was. A, it, we'll get to that in a second. It was a tale of two markets. Uh, from the open, from the morning session into the closing session. Uh, but again, despite today's rally, we are building, uh, again, another base here. We're building a pretty good base here uh, below the 20-day moving average. I would like to see, from the bullish point of view, um, I would like to see a close at least, at least at 376. Minimum 376, definitely uh, confirming the August 4 highs of 378. If we can get a back above, above the 378 level, then I think the bulls will start stretching out again and have a nice little run uh, into uh, the fourth, well, into uh, into the final movements of summer and into uh, Labor Day. So I, I think for the bulls to to really start stretching their legs, uh, write this down, guys. Set alert! It needs to get a back above uh, the 378 level, and it's building a bottom here, which is uh, you know, which is actually good because it's giving us a point of reference for a potential next leg lower. So we have 378 to the upside. And you see how many times it held 371.50, right, you guys? Three days in a row, it held 371.50. So that's our ranges uh, going into tomorrow's session. Uh, above 378, super bullish. Uh, below 371.50, and then we start going more and more and getting closer back to the 50-day moving average. So that's the point of reference uh, that we are looking for. If you look at the SPYs, uh, they did a little bit better today, right? They did a little bit better they at least tried to get back above the mat. They still got rejected off the five-day moving average for the S&P to get bullish, right? And this is, these are the levels that we really have to concentrate on from the SPY, using the SPY as a point of reference, uh, three, 450, 350. See these two areas here? 450, 350 was the high on August the 2nd, and the high from yesterday was 53. So it needs to get above at least 453 to reclaim back the 10-day moving average for the market to kind of start moving back higher. And on the low side, uh, this candle that was yesterday's low, and you can make a case that despite, you know, despite today's major move, it was a pretty good move here in the spies, we still put an inside day from yesterday's selling. So uh, 353, 453 to the upside and uh, 446 to the downside. Those are the ranges that we want to play for the next leg up or potential next leg down key is to be prepared, right? I, I say this all the time. We don't have magic, you know, magic eight balls. We don't have the secret sauce. It's all in the charts. And every single video we talk about, I'm not trying to guess, I'm not trying to anticipate, I'm not trying to guess, but what we are trying to do is be prepared. And that's exactly what we talked about. Uh, we rall I, I rattled off a lot of names on the weekend update for all you guys who didn't watch the weekend update show. It was yesterday's video or actually Saturday's video. Uh, watch the video. You know, I gave you guys a lot of really strong plays because that's the research. That's the whole point. We we never know if the research is going to confirm. We just have to be prepared for it. And if you look at today's action, just brilliant, brilliant action in the morning. You had a scenario today that the Bears won in the morning. We were talking about a lot of setups. So I'll get to them in a second. Uh, over the weekend update, you had the Bears winning in the morning 
And then you had the Bulls kind of waking up and kind of seizing the day uh, in the afternoon. So it was one of those situations that everybody should be happy. Everybody won, but they, the violence today, and that's a good thing. Uh, the violence today in the morning was really special and it was led by Tesla, right? We were prepared by Tesla. We talked about Tesla in the weekend video, uh, how important that 50 day moving average was. And you know, the stock had a great rebound today uh, off the lower band, but the damn thing went down $12 first. And it was an awesome trade guys. Congratulations uh, for all you guys who caught it. It was just incredible. Just once it lost that 50 day moving average, and we talked about uh, the importance of the 50 day moving average, it just absolutely imploded and it held the lower Bollinger band today. And obviously this is going to be become uh, the line in the same going forward, but we're not out of the woods just yet on Tesla. Despite this rally back here, it's still closed below the 50 day moving average. Uh, for me, well, not for me to, to get bullish, like, like a uh, risk back on, um, obviously we need to get this thing above 373 to get super bullish. But I, I think for the intermediate case, I, I think Tesla at least needs to at least needs to, to to close above 255 to kind of break this little uh, selling cycle that we started from the earnings level. But again, at least we know the line in the sand now going further. And you know, is there a chance that Tesla has a dead cat bounce day tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Why not? Right? It had a great, great, uh, really good. I mean, really, really great uh, reversal here off the bottom. But again, we're nowhere clear. Uh, out of the woods yet. Again, we're still underneath the 50-day moving average. And now the question is, especially on Tesla, how long can it could, could it sit below the 50-day? If the bulls want a swinging chance for this thing to kind of wake up at any given point in the future, it really needs to take back uh, the 50-day moving average, which is now, it was demand, right? Now it's supply. That's how important that 255 is uh, going into tomorrow and the next day, so forth and so on. But uh, it really is a tale of two markets right now. Uh, you still have you know some really good uh, looking setups for tomorrow. Uh, you have Amazon. It was strong all day today. You can see this range here. It's putting it on the 60 minute. Uh, they were coming for the 43 and the 144 weeklies. Uh, look at a name, for example, like Google, right? Google was another one. It had a great quarter. Uh, had a great quarter. Uh, first close today. Uh, over the five-day moving average. Let's watch Google for tomorrow, right? Let's definitely keep an eye on it. If the market is strong uh, and it is start bouncing back, let's keep an eye on Google. Again, first close uh, over the five-day moving average ever since uh, the drawback or the pullback uh, after earnings. But on the flip side, right? On the flip side, again, look at Square, right? Square uh, did not rally today. It had an inside day. I uh, reported crappy earnings on Friday. I want to watch this thing the next couple of days. I think, you know, there's... If it can't rally in the next couple of days and starts attacking back the earnings lows, this thing's going to start. It's the next leg down. Same thing with uh, DOCN we talked about uh, on the video uh, on the weekend. Again, another example of another inside day got destroyed on Friday, right? Got destroyed on Friday, kind of rested today. You know, up to, you know, it was down like, it was down 10 on Friday. It was up 50 cents today. You follow what I'm saying? Inside day. Uh, I'm watching this thing for the next couple of days for the next leg down as well. Uh, so we're set up, all right? And that's the whole point. You want to be make sure that you have an opinion for the next day, but you are prepared on both sides of the market because, again, we don't know which side is going to confirm, and that's why it's super important to uh, to be ready on both sides. So let's talk about it, right? Talk about it. Uh, guys, congratulations. Really, really stellar session today. Uh, we talked about Apple, continuation day two. On, as a matter of fact, there was a lot of information on on. On Saturdays, uh, I just realized I shared a lot of information on Saturday's uh, broadcast. But hey, man, if you caught these things, it played out well. So here was Tesla. Again, we we I think I made a pretty good case on Saturday. Uh, what happens if it loses the 50-day moving average? Uh, 253, 250. Uh, again, they're, they're blaming today's early weakness on the CFO resigning. I mean, 12-point move on a CFO resigning. Yeah, I don't know about that. So anyway, uh, 253 and 250, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, stock went all the way down to... Uh, 242 and change. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, Apple was great. We talked about that on the weekend video, a uh, second day potential uh, meltdown on Apple. Uh, 180, 190, if it builds below, can have its second day of selling. That's what Apple did. Apple got toasted. Look at Apple here. After it took out, uh, after it took out this whole range here, right? After it took out this whole range here, Apple, you know, went, went down to 177. It's an absolute phenomenal move on Apple. Uh, AI got hit as well. AI 3766, if it builds below, can confirm the 50 day. Again, another 50 day, uh, another 50 day uh, candidate here. So it took out 
uh, the 36766 and went all the way down to 34. Just some, you can see, it's just phenomenal moves this morning. Really, really great session here. Uh, Amazon was one of the very few to the upside. Uh, 14150 rejected twice, needs to build. So here was Amazon, right? So here's the sneaky pivot. You guys hear me talk about sneaky pivots all the time. You see these two candles here, right? Actually, three candles here. You see these three candles here, right? It was 14150 kept on getting rejected. Once it got above and started building the price on that 141.50, traded all the way up, uh, all the way up into almost the 143 level. I still like it uh, for this week. Uh, one of the very few uh, names I, I did like on the upside today. Again, we're still watching DOCN. We're still watching Square. AAOI had a really, really big move, right? Uh, AAOI 11.50 and 11.70 pre-market highs needs to confirm. Look at this move on AAOI. AAOI, right? Look at this move on AAOI, guys. Look at this move here. This thing just absolutely exploded, confirmed the 11.50, 11.70, and traded all the way up to uh, 13.17. Just absolutely huge move. As you can see, there's a lot of things going on today. UPST, 59.50, if it builds below, can flush. That was an understatement. Congrats to all you guys who caught uh, UPST. Look at this flush here. It took out, you see this whole 59.50 level, right? It took out the 59.50, just, just absolutely imploded. Uh, Mara, remember we talked about Mara on the video? I really did give a lot of a lot of information on Saturday. I got to cut some of this back. I'm just joking. I'm glad you guys took advantage of it. Uh, Mara, 15.75, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was Mara. Again, the same thing. Just everything got absolutely annihilated uh, in the morning. And the next thing you know, things started bouncing back. Uh, the Q's held. That's the magic number on the Q's, guys. 371.50 held three times. Their builds below can flush more. Again, they kept on holding. So that's going to be a very, very uh, big number going forward. And that's it. And that's it. Some really, really great stuff today. Uh, I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, again, we're, we're not trying to predict the future. Like I said, nobody's trying to be the smartest guy in the room uh, or trying to be uh, this, this magnificent market pundit. We're trying to accumulate as much data as possible from the previous night's research and waiting patiently for confirmation. And that's all we're supposed to do as traders, uh, not to gamble, not to uh, you know put our, pat ourselves on the back, stay ready, be ready, and stay solvent. Guys, God bless everybody. Great, great start to the week. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.